If you're looking for that barista style latte or cappuccino, you most likely will need something to froth your milk with. Now I have a very practical kitchen gadget that'll froth your milk automatically to different levels while also just warm your milk to make a very nice hot chocolate. Hi, this is Anthony with Everything Practical. Today I'm going to do a review on the WMF Milk Frother. In this video, I'll do a quick setup, how to, and tips and tricks of what I found out while using this frother. And then at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts. If you find any part of this video helpful along the way, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Let's get right on into it. So this milk frother is pretty straightforward in what comes in the box, and that is the milk frother itself, the base to the milk frother, and the top to the milk frother. A few things to note to begin with, inside of the milk frother, you will have a few lines to show you how much milk you should be filling up into the frother itself, depending on what milk you would like to make. It gives you a minimum level, gives you a minimum level of milk there at the bottom, a maximum level if you're going to have very frothy milk, and then also a max level if you're going to have just warm milk. Using this is very simple. You'll see at the very bottom that there is a hole and this is for the electronic piece. This is the electronic piece, also the base, that has a cable firmly attached. You want to take the cable, plug it into your nearest socket, and then you can take your milk from a jug and put it on top. It slides on nice and easily, so you don't need to force it. Next, what you'll do is put your milk in. I'll do a demonstration of each of the four different settings on here, but first I'll finish up with the setup. So after you have your milk in, you just take your top, put your top on. Once you're all ready, you press this button once, and when you press this button, it will highlight which function you want to use. To change the function, you just press the power button repeatedly until it's highlighted whichever one you want. Now these three settings are first, warm, dense foam, warm, airy foam, cold foam, and warm milk. When you're at the desired one that you would like, then you let it sit for three seconds and then it will start. I'll do a dry run to show you and then we'll do it with milk. So to choose these, you press the button once or twice, three times, and you can see this going around the edges and four. Now if you press it and it start and it turns on, this middle part will light up and it is starting to run. And if you want to turn it off for any reason, you just press this again. So let's trial each of these with milk in it and then let's see the consistency of milk afterwards. So let's take our milk while the machine is off and I'm going to fill it up to the minimum level so I don't waste too much milk. All right, this is the minimum level. So first, of course, put the top on. That's where your spinner is. And then I'm going to choose the dense foam first. So you press the button once, or if you press it twice and you need to go back to it, you can just keep pressing. So first, the dense foam. Let's let this run and I'll be back and let you know how long this takes. Now you can see the spinning in there. At least you can see the milk spinning. Now when this is finished, it'll stop and turn off automatically. And it will do this on all modes. Now this is finished and it took about two minutes. Now let's see what it looks like. You see that it's turned itself off. This light is off. And then we can take the top off and you can see how nice and frothy this is. You can just tap this off to get as much froth in there as we can. And then I will just show you what this looks like. You can see it is a very, very nice froth. Now to show you this froth, I'll show you in the glass. Take the froth. Give a little swirl and pour out the milk that's in there first. And then you have all this nice froth still on top. So we have warm milk here at the bottom. I think you might be able to see this. And then froth all the way up to here. And that is the dense froth. I will clean this and come back and show you the airy froth. Now again, I'll do this for the dense froth. I'll fill this up. I know you can't see this, but I'll fill this up again to the to between the minimum and max for the airy froth and then plop the top on. It is still plugged in and then press it twice on the airy froth. It has started up and we'll let it go until it's finished. Now if it's now if it's making any noise like this, that means the roller isn't an exactly in the middle of its holder. So you can just give it a little tap or a little shake 
and then it'll center itself up and that noise will go away. Now with the thicker froth, it does get a little bit louder at the end. You can hear this, it's rattling around, but and that's because the froth is thick and it's hard for this little spinny thing to stay in the center. So you do have some vibration making some noise. Now the dense air froth took a little bit longer, took about three to four minutes, but let's have a look at what this looks like. I'll pop the top off. You can already see most likely that the froth is much, much frothier. <laughs> and then let's give this, let's have a look and give it a little shake. And then the milk at the bottom. And then the nice airy froth. Look at that. Now there's still a bit in here and you can use a spatula to get this out. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'll just leave this. And then we can compare what we had before. Here, we have the milk down here. So on this one, we have the milk down here and then all of this froth. It is indeed much airier and a lot less milk. I'll go clean this out once again and then we'll do the cold froth. Now doing the cold froth is the same as before. We fill this up with milk to the minimum level or you can fill it up to the maximum froth line. Put the top on and then press the button three times to the cold froth selection and then wait three seconds and then it will start. Let's see how long this one takes. So now the cold milk frother is done. That also took about two to two and a half minutes. Let's take the top off and have a look. It's very similar to the dense froth that we did before, which I was expecting because the warm airy froth is airy. <laughs> now let's have a look and give this a pour. Yeah, you can see it's quite more a bit more liquid, but still a very nice bit of froth on top. Now, and not, now I'm not sure if you can see this, but the milk level is the highest that we had out of all of them. It's about up here, and then the rest you have your froth. But still very nice in the end. Now the last is the warm milk. If you'd like to use this for warm milk, it does that as well. I think just doing it in the microwave is probably the easiest, but if you would like to use this to heat up milk, it does it in about two to three minutes. Now cleaning this is very straightforward. All you need to do is take the top. It is one piece, so you can just rinse it out, clean, clean it, this part out under water with a little bristle sponge. That's very easy. And then this also is very simple to clean. You don't want to put this in the dishwasher because it has electronics. So you do need to use this as hand wash only clean it out on the inside and then the outside for fingerprints because this is stainless steel on the outside. One other tip that I would give you is when you do scoop this out, I would recommend using some type of plastic or silicone scoop so that you don't scratch the inside using a metal spoon or anything. So all in all, I do really like this frother. I really like that it gives you the option to give you a dense foam, an airy foam, a cold foam, and also do warm milk. I like using this for doing hot chocolates. And also if I'm ever having a cappuccino, this is very useful to have. I do prefer this over the hand ones that you offer because it has a fixed setting. Now, if you get this and you decide that you don't like the exact consistency of the foam that you're getting, like I said, you can do some trial and error on your own. And after a certain amount of time passes, you can turn it off to have the exact froth that you would like. So I hope you enjoyed my review of this milk frother. If you have any other questions that I didn't answer during this video, be sure you leave a comment in the comment section below and I will make sure I get back to you. If you would like to purchase this milk frother or something similar to it, I will be leaving links in the description below so that you can find it and price check it. If you found this video useful, be sure you give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more practical content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So I hope you can go and enjoy a nice barista style coffee made right in your home. As always, Stay practical and I'll see you in the next one.